Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Tommy Grimes and I vlog about people, places, and things that I love from the city of brotherly love to the city of angels. Today, we're breaking down the differences between Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. I'll compare my results from each, prices, health services, subscriptions, add-ons, and finding and messaging matches and more. I've been making lots of vlogs on DNA testing, so at some points I may reference vlogs I've already created if you want to dive in a little bit deeper. A year ago, I made two vlogs comparing 23andMe, Ancestry DNA, and Family Tree DNA. This will serve as an update for 2020 going into 2021. I'm also working on three tutorial vlogs with some friends that I'll be releasing over the next month. I'll show you there step-by-step -step how to take a 23andMe, Ancestry DNA, or MyHeritage DNA test. Then I'll follow up with each of my friends to reveal their results in separate vlogs. First, some quick background. I started this process to try and find my late father's biological family after we learned we had some Jewish ancestry when my oldest sister Carrie was diagnosed with BRCA1 breast cancer, which had a mutation specifically linked to Ashkenazi Jewish people. I'm working on a documentary series that follows my journey. For the first time at the end of this vlog, I will include a trailer for my future series, which I'm currently calling Grimy. When I took these tests, I was primarily interested in finding out how much Jewish ancestry I had, finding my father's biological family, and learning whether or not I had the same BRCA1 variant as both of my sisters. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Here we go. 23andMe got my sample just two days later. Within one week, I was able to see my results. Ancestry DNA was next to receive my sample five days after I put it in the mail, and within two weeks, I had my results. However, the DNAgeek.com currently lists processing times of one month for Ancestry and 14 days for 23andMe. So those times can vary. So what were my results? Let's flash back to the moment I learned with my sisters how much, if any, Jewish Ancestry we actually had. Who do I want us to be related to? Big projects. Jurgen Plot. Is there a famous Brooklyn Jew? I almost just uh, Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Oh, so let's be related to Bernie Sanders then. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody. Okay, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> no, you can't steal my answer. It wasn't even your answer. Somebody else said it. You should have like figured out how this works before you Oh, 34.4% Ashkenazi Jewish. Eh, whoa. I should note that both results changed over time as the companies continue to refine their processes. Here are my 23andMe results today versus last year, and I apologize if this is about to get into the weeds. Now it shows 64.6% .6 Northwest European with my French and German ancestry significantly increasing. My Jewish ancestry went up by 0.2%. My Southern European ancestry fell by almost 3%, and my broadly European results fell by about 2.5%. I no longer see Scandinavian, Portuguese, and Spanish, or Eastern European. Meanwhile, my ancestry DNA results have also changed since last year. My German ancestry is down by 6%, my French and Jewish ancestry are both down by 2%, and Swedish ancestry is now completely gone. My British is up by 2%, my Irish and Scottish ancestry is now divided into two, showing 3% for each. And now I show 7% ancestry from Norway. If I compare my results from both 23andMe and Ancestry, you can see there are some significant differences. Ancestry has more British, Scottish, and Irish in my results than 23andMe. They also show Norwegian ancestry. However, there's only a 1.5% difference in my Jewish ancestry between the two. 23andMe specifies Ashkenazi Jewish, while Ancestry breaks down the regions in Europe where my Jewish ancestors likely migrated from. Now, I can't say for sure which of these two are more accurate. From what I understand, inheriting DNA from your parents is not an exact science. You can get more of one bit of ancestry from either your mother or father. I actually was able to test my father while he was still alive using family tree DNA, which showed he had 54% Jewish ancestry, mostly Ashkenazi, but also some Sephardic, leading me to believe one of his parents was Jewish and the other was not. He also had British and both Western and Eastern European in his ancestry results. I also tested my mom on ancestry DNA. I've always known her side and the family was mostly German or Pennsylvania Dutch, like this guy. Mose, what are you doing? No, Mose, put the, put the manure down. Put it down, do not throw it, do not, ow! We also have two farms in our family. I digress. Anyway, her ancestry shows 66% German, 25% British, 
and Northwestern European plus Norwegian and Scottish. So you can see how I got some surprising results. Even though my dad was 54% Jewish, I'm more than a quarter, which you might expect me to only have like 25%. My mom has 6% Norwegian, but I have seven. So this isn't perfect, but like I said, you can get more of a certain ancestry than another. Now, I have to be honest, I kind of like Ancestry's map a little bit better. It just seems like it does a better job of isolating each part of my ethnicity on the map. Although 23andMe does a real good job with my German ancestry. From my research, the first Werkheisers to come to America in the 1700s came from a little town called Verkhausen. Ancestry knows that I'm Pennsylvania Dutch though, and has a little feature about Pennsylvania settlers, which is super cool. It also shows me where some of my relatives are on the map. 23andMe doesn't offer geographic information for my Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. It does give you a little history on them though. You can also view both of these maps on mobile apps. Now looking at matches, 23andMe came back with 1500. Over ancestry, I gotta dig a little bit deeper, but eventually under my matches and shared DNA, I can see over 1,200 matches that are fourth cousins or closer and over 30,000 distant matches. If your goal in taking these tests is to connect with long lost family, it's worth taking into consideration the size of each company's DNA database. Ancestry has a database of over 18 million people compared to 23andMe's 12 million person database. So to draw from the biggest pool of users, I'd recommend going with Ancestry first and if you want to increase your chances, then also take 23andMe. If you want, you can go further then and you can go to places like MyHeritageDNA, FamilyTreeDNA, and GED Match, where you can upload your results to their databases for a lower price or even for free, which is cheaper than ordering a kit from these companies. I also made a vlog about how to upload your raw DNA to MyHeritage, so you can head over to my channel if you want to check that out. Looking at the results, you'll notice that Ancestry DNA shows your connection in centimorgans and segments. A centimorgan is a unit of genetic measurement. Roughly, each person has 6,800 centimorgans. The amount of centimorgans you share with someone is what they use to estimate your relationship. Ancestry has my mom with 3,436 shared centimorgans, which predicts a parent-child relationship. You can see with each match, the estimated possible relationships and how likely each variation is. If you click on a match, you can also see how your ethnicity results compare to theirs. If you have a parent who's taken the test with Ancestry, you can see whether a match is from your maternal or paternal side. Over at 23andMe, your matches are shown in percentage of shared DNA in addition to shared segments, but you need to actually connect with someone to see how many centimorgans you share and more detail. It also gives your estimated relationship. They recently added a family tree feature, which makes a sort of guess of how you may be related to your matches. You can also add information though and correct that. And Ancestry has their own family tree service, which is how the company started. It's a subscription though, where you can also search through records to trace back your family line. Now getting a hold of your matches is probably the next thing you'll do if you're searching for your family. However, be warned, a lot of times people don't frequently check their accounts. I believe both 23andMe and Ancestry send messages to users' emails, but a lot of times that goes straight to the junk mail. So you have to be a little patient with responses. I like Ancestry's messaging a little bit better. It's split into conversations and makes a little bit more sense than 23andMe, where it's in your notification tab. So you get alerts for all sorts of random things that are not people messaging you. It's also in this list format, which is kind of tough to navigate. The messages are separated from notifications on the mobile app, but it's still, again, the same list there too. Looking at the prices for both companies, if we compare their base options, which are just showing ethnicity and matches, you have both 23andMe and Ancestry DNA kits for $99, but they're constantly going on sale. I have another vlog about when to look for sales and about how much you can expect to save. So check that out if you're looking to find out the best deals, especially heading into the holidays. Usually Ancestry has their base kit on sale for less than 23andMe, who doesn't really put their base option on sale quite as often. Both companies offer additional services and subscriptions as add-ons. Ancestry lets you add on traits for an additional $28.
I should note though, that the traits feature is something that is included with the 23andMe kit. They both have health services. Again, I have a more detailed vlog you can check out comparing the two solely on health. 23andMe has had their health option for a lot longer. They both show that I have the BRCA1 mutation and it really sucks that all three of my siblings have inherited that. I kind of like the way the 23andMe has their health results laid out. I felt like they caught more things, but Ancestry is already adding new reports to their health service. I paid $49 to add the health service to my Ancestry account. I don't know why or how, but I got my girlfriend Sandra the Ancestry kit for 23andMe and it upgraded her to show the health results for free. So I'm sure you can pay to upgrade as well, I just don't know how much it is. 23andMe offers their Health and Ancestry kit for $199 versus $179 for Ancestry DNA's Health kit. Ancestry is known for their historical record search subscription to do some serious family tree research. The US Discovery membership is $25 a month or $99 for six months. They also have additional levels like World Explorer and All Access. 23andMe has a new subscription service called 23andMe Plus, which is $29 a year. It gives you exclusive heart health reports, drug metabolism reports, migraine reports, advanced DNA relatives filters, and additional reports to be released in the future. If I had to give a recommendation as to which test to purchase, then I first would wanna know what you value most. By price, Ancestry DNA is usually the cheaper option, even though their basic kit is the same price as 23andMe. That's because it's more often on sale. Their health service though is also cheaper. But if you're looking for health results exclusively, I'd probably go with 23andMe because they've been doing it a little bit longer. If you're looking for matches, I'd start with Ancestry DNA and then do 23andMe as well if you want to increase your pool of matches. If you're serious about getting into genealogy and fleshing out your family tree, Ancestry is definitely the way to go. Their subscription services are made for that. If you are looking for the most accurate results, I'm not sure I can say. I like my Ancestry results a little bit better because it seems a little bit more detailed, but that's just my opinion. If you're looking to give it as a gift or you just wanna do it for fun, I like the way that 23andMe lays out their website a little bit more, except for their messages, which kind of suck. They also give you traits for free, uh, which is not the case for Ancestry, and that's kind of a fun little option there. DNA tests have actually been declining in sales recently. 23andMe laid off 100 people in January of 2020, and I don't know if it's also related, but back in August of 2020, Ancestry had a majority stake in their company purchased by an investment firm named Blackstone. Can't say for sure, but there could be a few reasons for this. It can be increased concerns surrounding privacy. These companies can get requests for information from law enforcement, and that can lead to a whole Pandora's box of issues. It could be that the market has become saturated with everyone who wanted to take a test having already taken one, which might explain why you see add-ons and subscription services like 23andMe Plus offer to increase revenue. Or it could just be that the novelty's worn off. I don't know. Either way, these are all things to consider before testing your DNA. If you're looking for matches especially, you may not see as many new matches over time as we once did. Or it could all turn and sales could start to go through the roof again. What are your thoughts on DNA testing? If you've already taken one of these tests, which would you recommend? And why did you choose to take a DNA test to begin with? Let me know in the comments. If this video was helpful, please give it a like. Subscribe for more vlogs like this. Be on the lookout for my how-to tutorials and for more videos about the people, places, and things that I love, including my adventures in LA and Philly. Make sure you hit the notify button so you can find out when I'm posting new stuff. I know for me and my search for my father's biological family, DNA testing was critical. So, segue. Like I said earlier, I'm slowly making progress on a documentary series about the search for my late father's biological family. You can check out the backstory on my channel, but today I wanted to get a little sneak peek on some stuff I've been working on that also explains why I decided to embark on this journey in the first place. So with that being said, here it is.
Hey everyone. Hello there. Hello everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. I'm Tommy Grimes. I'm Tommy Grimes. I'm Tommy. And I vlog about people, places, and things that I love from the city of brotherly love to the city of angels. And recently I've been super into DNA testing. I started these tests to find my father's biological family. My dad, James Grimes, was born in Brooklyn in 1954. His birth name was James John Mayers. There was this rumor. His mother had an affair with a merchant marine. He had three older siblings at the time of his birth. His mom was 24 and his dad was 30, allegedly. He was adopted by Tom and Lila Grimes. They were the best people. I still miss my grandparents. I'm my grandfather's namesake and he's my hero. Dad went to Bible school in Philly. He studied in Israel for a year. He loved it there. Israel was his favorite. He met mom and had three kids. Carrie, Stacy, and me, Tommy. James became a pastor. Dad became a church planter. We moved to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Yes, it's a real place. We started a church called Carpenters. It was our life. It was your father's calling. We were PKs. We were Christians. Evangelicals. Conservatives. I was a bit of a Jesus freak in high school. I am a born again Christian. Today I'm still a Christian. I'd say a more socially liberal Christian and I go to a reformed church. I'm not a Christian. I suppose that I am agnostic. James was asked to resign from the church in 2008. In 2010, he was diagnosed with early onset dementia. On New Year's 2016, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was a specific mutation only found in Ashkenazi Jewish people. Dad would have loved to have known about his Jewish heritage. He never knew because of the dementia. On April 21st, 2020, Dad died from COVID-19. It was a very long, slow goodbye. I'm very sure that today, your dad is in the presence of God in heaven. It's hard to explain why, but I wanted to learn more about our Jewish ancestry, and I wanted to find my father's biological family. So I took three DNA tests. Oh, 34.4% 34. Ashkenazi Jewish. This is a story I'm not prepared to tell, but I will nonetheless as it unfolds around me. After leaving the church, I often felt ill-prepared for the bigger world and the challenges ahead. Where could I go to find community, family, love, how could I rebuild from the ruins of my faith and create my own meaning? Will discovering secrets that my father never knew provide me with some sort of insight as to who I am? Why am I so goddamn invested in learning about my Jewish heritage? I've charted a path that's much different than the one my father would have chosen for me. But I choose to carry forward with me the heart of his teachings, to love everyone, no matter our differences. As I uncover more of my father's story, I know I still need to make peace with my own past. No matter how I grow or change, it will always be a part of me. It's proud to be grimy. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all again real soon.